What's that mean on there? It's like we're we're further over them. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you are, you are. I hope I've not done that. Right, we should be okay. Lovely. All is good. All is well. There you go, you both. Are we in shot? Can you step up? <laughs> I think if I do step back, I'm going to yes. sit on the mouse. Perfect. We all good. Yeah. Good slot. Are we good? Yes, there we go. There we are. People can hear us. Are we are we live on sound? There we are. Okay. Uh, apologies for the the late start, but hello everybody and welcome to this live watch along as Alfreton Town host Spennymore in the National League North in a massive massive game, the last home game uh, of the regular season, bar a, a potential playoff tie, obviously, which is something that Alfreton could all but secure today. Yeah. Not mathematically as we've no, gone through. But, but we've worked out we can't mathematically get uh, be, be secured in the playoffs. But a win today would mean that Kurz and Ashton would have to score 17 goals today. Uh, well, make up 17 goals on yeah. us over the, today and against Stortford on the last game of the season next Saturday where we play Scarborough. So if we win today, if... Um, We'll have a pretty. There'll be a good feeling around the impact, and yeah. uh, I think we'll be pl playing, feeling pretty secure that we will be in the playoffs regardless. But we want that home draw in the first eliminate. We want to get that fifth spot. You know, it's laid down yeah. for us, so we have a home tie next yeah. week or it's, a week after. Sorry. Yeah, it's very. It, the importance of getting that sort of home tie is just. It's so so high, and I think you're going to see. Obviously, Spennymore are in the mix for the playoffs, and there are those teams that are kind of hovering around on sort of 71 points. Curzon, obviously, one of them. South Shields just beneath us at the moment. Um, but it's going to be all about who can finish highest and who can get the home draw. I mean, fourth place isn't completely out of the picture if Chorley have a bit of a, a bit of a stinker towards the end of the season. Obviously, losing to Kings Lynn uh, midweek, but they do have uh, two games to go, which look fairly winnable so if it does come down to finishing fifth that is what we'll settle for but it's something that is going to be a massive achievement regardless should we make the playoffs yeah i think the teams that can catch us obviously spending more hit a day will, uh, if they beat us we'll be in with a good chance of catching us while well, the goal level on points i believe if they beat us today um south shields are playing tamworth so we're hoping a tamworth do us a favor there uh, you've also got Curzon, whose last two games are Gloucester and Stortford, the two teams to already be relegated from the National League North. So not our most ideal set of fixtures for Curzon. And Boston also have a chance to catch us. They have a game in hand. They play Banbury on Thursday next week, which Banbury look pretty gl uh, grim in terms of the relegation battle. So we're not banking on Banbury to do us any favours on Thursday next week against Boston, so they're a team to watch out for as well. So there's a multitude, three or four teams that are really are in a realistic chance of catching us, but the key word is they have to catch us. Exactly. We're in we are now. in the position of power. One thing uh, my dad always said to me about football as a kid is you can't rely on other teams. You've got to do it yourself. And if you're relying on other teams, you've not really earned it. So we are in that position of power and we have the control to make sure we can have that. So that is the positive against all that. But the teams are lining up in the tunnels. I'll quickly run you through the starting 11. If you, are you ready? I don't yeah, know if you were. If no, you were. My feedback's playing up, but we should be all good to go, providing people can hear me. Um, so starting for Alfred and Town today, we have number one, George Willis. Number two, Josh Claxton. Number 23, Nathan Newell. Number four, Adam Lund. Number five, Ken Diggy. Number six, and the captain today, Dwayne Wiley. Number eight, George Cantrell. Number nine, Jake Day. Number 10, Liam Waldock. Number 22, Billy Fuster. And number seven, Jordan Thewlis. And on the bench, number 29, Ryan Taylor. Number 11, Lewis Salmon. Number 12, Harry Perrett. Number 24, Joey McDonough. And number 13, Jake Askew. 
Yeah, and I believe that is the fifth game on the bounce Billy Heath has named the exact, exact same, same start in 11. So mm -hmm. he's clearly happy with how this team's playing. We've seen a lot of experimentation over the season with strikers, especially with Taylor Day, Jerry McDonough coming in. Not really anyone secure, but I think Jake Day has won that battle now. I think he has. Um, with his efforts over the past couple of weeks, and he seems to be the favoured striker, uh, striker now with... A few things, obviously, Perrot dropping out of the team with injuries, back on the bench, and he has been making appearances, but not in his usual right-back position he's been playing in midfield. But we'll run you through the away side today. You have number 31, at Brad James in goal, who had an excellent game in the reverse fixture, who made two or three great saves in the first half, which kept the game, well, kept the game pretty even. Uh, number three, Reese Staunton. Number five, Lebron M. Becker. Number seven, Will Harris. Ten, Rob Ramshaw. Sixteen, Ben Pollock. Twenty-two, Danny Greenfield. Number twenty-four, Michael Ledger. Twenty-eight, Corey McCone. Twenty-nine, Matty Dolan. Thirty-five, Finney, Finley, I think it's Finley, actually, Finley, someone yeah. told me. Shrimpton. And on the bench is four, Callum Ross. Nine, Glenn Taylor. Fifteen, Dan Myers. Thirty-six, Isaac Fletcher. Forty-four, Gary Liddell. So the teams have... Come out of the tunnel as we review the teams. They're lining up, shaking yeah. the hands, and we're going to see the kickoff imminently. And I've got a feeling that Alfred are going to win it today. Obviously, we want to be optimistic at all the times. Yeah, we, we, I've got have we ever feeling. predicted a loss? No, of course not. But Spennymore, uh, certainly a tough opposition. Um, you know, on paper, at least in recent weeks, we've been playing teams who are sort of beneath them in the table. Obviously, Curzon was a tough game. That ended in a nil-nil. Um, either team could have won it on the day. Uh, but I feel that it's come to this point of the season where these sorts of games matter most. And Alfred and Town will be looking to come out on top. Yes. And as you've said, an unchanged team. Billy's clearly got the trust in these players to be the 11 who go out. But then he's also confident enough with the players on the bench to come on and make a difference if necessary but I suppose we'll just have to we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, Spenny as well were definitely playoff outsiders. They were not really in that conversation throughout the season and then Graham Lee came in and once he got that first win, the form turned and they put together a massive run of form and I think for a long time they were the most informed team in the league and they've really thrown themselves into that conversation, forced their way in from the outside so definitely one I think out of those sides on 71 points are one of the favourites yeah, um, I wouldn't disagree with I that. would have because of the form the momentum clearly there's something going right in the uh, in the north east so yeah. and also I, I'm a big fan of Graham so for yeah. personal uh, uh, personally but I think that, that you're not wrong to say that. I think they've had an absolutely fantastic second half of the season looking at how they started, obviously, with the managerial change. But out of those sorts of teams, you know, Curzon in the mix as well, I think it's it's certainly not an outside shout to say that they're definitely within a shot. But a loss today could hurt their chances and we will be hoping for that. Alfred and Town set to, uh, well, Spennymore set to get the game underway here at the impact. <coughs> Are you ready for the... National League North kickoff where it'll roll back and be sent diagonally towards one of the corners. Looks like this near corner. Yeah, it looks like that's going to be how it happens. The referee checks his watch any moment now. And we are underway at the impact. Spennymore shooting from left to right. There is the trademark kickoff. Dwayne Wiley sending it back where it came from. Headed back forward. Greenfield plays it inside. It's a miscued pass though, Josh Claxton gets it clear. Becca controlling it at the back and a pass a little bit behind, but Alfred are known for discipline and making it difficult for teams to break them down. But However, Spenny Moore find the way into the box as the wind Corey McCoyne looked to get round Kennedy Diggy, but got a left a strong left strong foot challenge. in. The wind is really having my life for this. Uh, the wind is having your life, and it might have the team sheet as well if we're not careful. That would be catastrophic. Will Harris looks to flick it around the corner for uh, Greenfield, but the ball will trickle out. I can see the back of his shirt is field, not a uh, feed, as it says on the uh, team sheet. Uh, not as uh, not as many mistakes as we had last time out, but still a, a few uh, noticeable errors. 
uh, so but we will do our best to rectify those as the stream goes on yeah I think Spenny Moore as well looking to nullify the threat of Jake Deer from a long ball forward oh a man in front and a man behind there until obviously it looked like it was going past Jake and someone dropped back off but clearly know that he's the one that we're going to try and hit yeah and I think it, he was certainly the outlet uh, on Tuesday night um, and I mean what a fantastic game he did have despite somehow not finding the back of the net uh, he played brilliantly was definitely in with a shout for man of the match isn't that a free flow mindset where just everything he was doing every little flick every touch everything it was, was just working. coming off and it was a shame but I think that's always a good thing you know when you've got a big game on a Saturday to play a team like Gloucester who not to downplay them as a team but there are already relegated you know they are they were down there for a reason you play them midweek it's a great momentum boost and it's uh it, it, it's great for kind of morale for the team and you know putting the ball in the back of the net it gives you that good feeling going into the weekend's game yeah exactly and I think those sorts of games are the ones that you kind of need to watch out for as well we've seen it a few times involving other teams where you play against the team and you think, you know, your favourites for the win, but you just never know what can happen because at the end of the day, that's football. And, you know, it could have gone the wrong way on the day, but obviously Alfred and remained disciplined. Didn't have the greatest start to the game. Uh, obviously Gloucester had their chances, but at the end of the day came out 3-0 winners. Jordan Thewlis Brace being the uh, main factor in that win, which allowed us to come into today off the back of a, a clean sheet and a victory, a good performance many players sort of rising to the occasion and we're hoping to see more of it today yeah just the first couple of minutes of this game it's been a bit of a battle of attrition kind of the teams knocking one forward coming back battling in those midfield areas which is obviously something that we are comfortable with a lot of our games go like that but no team really making anything of that yeah it was definitely going to be a case of who wants it more to say? Yeah, I, I wouldn't be shocked if that's what it ultimately comes down to. You've got two teams in a similar sort of position uh, in, in the grand scheme of things in the league table. And obviously Spennymore, with a win today, would get themselves up to 74 points, which we obviously would not like to see. But Yeah, that incentive's definitely there for Spennymore, exactly. but those, the lads need to know that their best performances will be need here today. And only be, uh, the, o the only time I want to see a better performance than today is in the playoff final. Yeah. I mean, it, this is the big game now. Ken Diggy just calmly nodding the ball back to George Willis with Will Harris on his back. Rolling it out. He's going to look to go long towards Jake Day. It's going to curl towards Billy Fuster, headed out by a Spennymore man, and it will be a throw for Alfredson on the right-hand side. Yeah, and that's what Alfredson are going to hope to be able to do, to put those awkward balls into the corners, for, to be able to challenge for them. Not even necessarily to win it right there. Billy Fuster did enough to make Reece Staunton go up for the header. It comes off him, and we get a nice Adam Lund long throw in a pretty decent position mm. early on could be the, uh, the chance for the opener. Josh Claxton is heading forward to give him the short option. Nathan Yule, the only man outside of the Spennymore penalty area as the throw comes in from Adam Lund towards Jake Day. It's fallen to George Cantrell. He's trying to keep it under control. It's a scorpion clearance. Ooh. Can I just say, by man. the way, Adam Lund's taken that throw in about 10 yards further than when it, where it went out. <laughs> I mean, it, it went out in, in a... Well, Ken Diggy, actually, just... You know, it went out for not like in a good. I said it in a good position. Adam Lund took it in a great position. <laughs> yeah, it's a way to put it. He, he moved to an absolute prime time, best place to put it flat across the box. Mm. Um, I think he was fighting against the wind a bit as well. It's not as strong as it was midweek, but it's definitely there. No, I think the midweek game, the wind was definitely a factor, and the uh, conditions themselves. I mean, we saw more so. The second goal being assisted by a mud patch in the six-yard box. Obviously, we've had fair weather this week, so it's not a particular concern for the match today, but it's something that will come into it. It wouldn't be surprised the wind could pick up, and you just never know. But at the moment, Spennymore 
trying to remain comfortable in possession, laying it back to their goalkeeper. George Cantrell is going to put him under pressure. And him long. They're the kind of battles you want to see. I mean, the, Spenny Moore have thrown the ball long. Dwayne Wiley's won the first header to knock it down the line. Cantrell won the second header to get it forward. And Jake Day won the third header. And Spenny Moore had to go all the way back to the goalkeeper. And that's going to be the difference. You win those battles, you're three for three in that area, mm. force them to go home rather than letting them have a chance. That's going to be something really important to do today. As that happened, Jake Day looked to have brought the ball down, but Mbaka manages to steal it. Dwayne Wiley having to show some defending to hold off his man and get the ball clear. Yeah, I'm going to be absolutely tortured every time I watch Dwayne Wiley play now because I can't believe every time I watch him now I just see how left footed he is <laughs> and I was so convinced that he wasn't yeah. um, on Tuesday it's eating away at me every <laughs> time I see him use his left foot and I'm like it's so we, I, you don't play too much mind do you? No um, uh, and again it's, it's any, if anything it's more of a a compliment more so than an oversight he, yeah. he's that accomplished with his right foot that you were convinced it was his strong foot. But Dwayne Marley playing on the left-hand side today. We've seen a bit of, um, you know, as you say, with the strikers this season, a lot of sort of altering between Ryan Taylor, Jake Day, Jerry McDonough since his arrival. It's not been too different at the back um, with the sort of two centre-halves changing um, throughout the season. You've had a mix of Ken Diggy and Dwayne Wiley that we're seeing today. We've seen Sean Brisley in that team alongside Wiley. We've seen him alongside Diggy. Um, obviously, Sean Brisley not in the team today. Uh, Harry Perrett is on the bench. He's another player who's filled in at centre-back this season. Um, and, he, you know, he's an accomplished player in that position. Yeah, he's the kind of man you want to have on the bench, really. Brisley's definitely one of the players that's very useful to have in the, in the squad regardless. Tamworth have gone 1-0 up. I've just been told against South Shields. Which Spenny Moore taking the free kick into the area. George Cantrell does get his head to it, but it goes back uh, on target. George Willis making the claim, though. Nothing too much for him to worry about there. The team will get back up the field. I'll let you catch up on the scores. Yeah, no, literally perhaps. only the Tamworth goal who are beating South Shields. So as it stands, if their game ends 1-0 and this ends... Nil nil. South Shields can no longer catch us on the last day of the season, which is what we want to. Which see. Uh, I think they are the only team on seventy-one points who, if they did catch us on points, have a similar goal difference. The rest yes. of the teams have quite a disparity. But as I say, that Spenny Moore come forward with Corey McCohen, who cuts inside onto his right foot. Claxton tracks him. He drops it off to Greenfield on the other side of the pitch. George Cantrell Great steps challenge. in really well win it back and uh, it's going to fall for Alfred and come forward as Lund sends it towards the corner for Billy Fuster does bring it down eventually lays it back to Josh Claxton Jordan Thewlis making the run on the left hand side diagonal ball comes up towards Jake Day it's headed away by Spennymore but picked up by Adam Lund trying to take this one down the line dispossessed though ultimately yeah, Ro Captain Rod Bramshaw does really well to track back in, get his arm across Lund and get his body in there. Billy Fuster, though. Fuster comes away with it and he Beats does... his man. Oh, he looks fouled? to get to the line. I think this... Cheers for a foul, but not too much to complain about no. there. He got ahead of his man and it was one of those where they sort of come together as the ball was rolling out of, uh, out of the field of play. Yeah, I think if it happens in the middle of the pitch, it's probably a foul, but I think in that area, yeah. he's not going anywhere with the ball. Um, and he's gone down easily. Going to be a goal kick for Spennymore to take. But uh, it's, it's good. Good. You got to give credit as well. It's good defender from restart. And Billy Fuster is a quick winger, mm. um, and he was stepping up as Billy Fuster kind of got there and knocked it round him. And that's a hard thing to deal with a quick winger running in behind you when the momentum's against you. You're going forward, and he's gone round. He has to turn. And he has to recover really well, and he does well to get his arm across and uh, make Billy Fuse to go right up to the byline and then slows him down enough with his arm to stop him putting the ball into the area. Mm. I mean, we've seen that sort of defending it becoming kind of a regular fixture with like the likes of Dwayne Wiley and Ken Diggy. It's something that they've, I think, that they excel at when it comes to that kind of 
area of the pitch, shepherding the ball out of play when they've got a defender and they're trying to win that goal kick or win a throw in. Yeah. It's something that is on another level. I mean, you, you can get a lot of occasions where they'll try and put a foot in, or you'll see it with the opposition with, you know, Fuster or Thewlis going down either side, and they'll end up trying to win a throw in and the defenders commit. And that's what we want because we know Jordan Thewlis especially, it, when, he, when he isolates a man and he can take him on, he excels. Lund throws the ball in the area, but it's headed away by Spenny Muir. A bit of time for Clacky to go home as Chester have taken the lead against Brackley. Chester lead 1-0 there. Maybe a bit too late for Chester to turn it on now as this oh. great flick on Fuster strikes and yes. he finds the far corner. A great flick on from Jake Day. Billy Fuster does so well to keep his composure and strike the half volley across goal into the far corner. It's a great finish. I mean, he's made the run. He's peeled off of his man. The Bulls come forward for Jake Day and he does what he does best. Flicks it on, beats his man. And Billy Fuster, he's got the time and space in the area to allow the ball to come over onto his right foot and volley it into the corner. He gets it beneath the goalkeeper into the bottom corner. And just like that, Alfred and take the lead. And it's 1-0. Yeah, could it be a massive goal in retrospect for our season. But we've seen this before. We took the, uh, the, the lead early on in the reverse fixture. And Spinning Moore came to turn that around and win 2-1 on the day. So it's not a write-off. They definitely have seen this position before. But Billy's seen this position before. And the Alfredton lads have seen this position before. And they will not want that to happen again. But the flick on from Jake Day is excellent. excellent yeah. the, um, the leap to get there. Kind of, it almost looked as if he was unchallenged uh, the way he commanded that area up the top of the pitch, and he does it again to knock it down. And Becker hits the decker, miscued pass from Lund, doesn't find Cantrell, but Wiley does well to step in. L Newell carrying the ball forward, he's found oh, space. Jake Day wanted that, but it's Liam Wildock out to goal scorer Billy Fuster on the right hand side. Yeah, who looks lively. He's looking to get across into the box. It comes across the area, steps up. Half cleared. Yeah. So as things stand, Alfredton will rise to 77 points, still in fifth place. Only one point behind Chorley and two points behind Brackley, who are currently losing at home to Chester. So you never know. I think that you makes it know. as things stand. Playoff is 100% secured, I believe. Of it, not actually, as if everyone else wins today, we can't win. But if South Shields get beat, yes, with South Shields getting, I beat, think that means we will at a very worst do seventh. Yes, if I all the scores stay the same, I want to say you're correct. But Spenny Moore breakthrough. McCoyne looks to get it across Greenfield, but he can't get enough power across. That's a gift. That's a massive, massive let off for Alfredton. I'll have to let you uh, take us through that one. I was still checking the it, it was. It just looked as though the 50-50 went in between McCohen and Kennedy Diggy and the ball broke for McCohen. He was through. Couldn't quite get the ball out of his feet. But uh, uh, defenders got across. Greenfield was across the area in space. If the square pass came, he would have had time for a touch and a strike at George Willis's goal but he couldn't get the ball out of his feet. A challenge went in, and by the time he poked it across, uh, a defender was there to intercept, and the chance went away. But Spenny Moore come again as Ramshaw attacks down the right-hand side, looks to get round Cantrell. He uses his body excellently. He has nowhere to go in the corner. Ramshaw takes it back off him. Finley Shrimpton crosses it into the area. Will Harris at the back post. It goes everyone. George Willis screaming at his defence. not happy. That cross cannot come into an area like that. No, we were fortunate that it was slightly overhit and it evaded everybody. <laughs> out, straight out for a goal kick, but you don't really want those kind of crosses coming into your box, especially just after taking the lead. Yeah, and you feel the urgency. The game has come to life with that goal. I mean, I, th I do think Spinning Wheel should have done a lot better at the back with the goal. Jake Day winning the header so easily to yeah. flick it on for Fuster, who had time, he, he just, just in space to let it come down and compose and pick his spot in the goal. But it seems to have brought the game to life. The urgency now from Spinning Wheel is there that they need to get back into this game. But I think the urgency is there for Alfredton as well. You saw the chance that Billy Fuster had when he went down the wing and put a ball into the area just after the goal. So. Ooh. 
Dwayne Wiley. High foot yeah. from Will Harris. Oh, is that right? It is, yeah. Yeah. Number seven. He's gone in uh, with his head, Dwayne Wiley. He's entitled to. Will Harris thought he could maybe get something on it. Yeah, he's just trying to flick it on. I mean, he, w while he's not come down, I'd say he's had to kind of do one of these to come for yeah, the he's, header. He, he's not put his head into a dangerous position. It's a, a simple ball that you'd expect the defender to use the head to get away. But no card from the referee, just a free kick. Yeah, I think I think Harris did try and pull his foot out of it once he realised he wasn't going to get there, which is why Dwayne Wiley isn't hurt. Um, but it was, you know, still in a dangerous enough position for the referee to yeah. get a free kick, which George Willis takes into the box towards Jake Day. It's bounced, cleared so away by Spenning McCann very far. Dwayne Wiley has it on the right, the left-hand side of the box. Liam Waldock now looks to get it back into the area. Oh, just, just over like here. Billy Fuster and out for a Spennymore goal kick. The referee is blowing his whistle for something here. I think he's calling over Jordan Thewlis. I think the good goes complaints from Jordan Thewlis is Jake Day was kind of backing up into him Becker. There was a lot of hands used to make sure Jay couldn't just kind of chest that down for Waldock yeah. on the edge. And I think Jordan Thewlis was the main protester. I mean, you're never going to get a penalty for a defender using holding some physicality it. in the area and holding a striker. If Jake Day tried to flick it in behind and spin and was brought down then maybe there was a complaint but he's kind of leaned back far enough for the referee to not see any infringement spending more with a throw on the far side around the sort of halfway line he's gone quite far forward with it Will Harris was not able to get that one under control still forward though Dwayne Wiley having to deal with it Jordan Thewlis flicking it on Liam Waldock once again Cleared back forward by Spennymore. Ken Diggy thinks this one's offside. As Harris takes it down inside the box. Oh, I mean, it's an excellent touch uh, into some space, but as the clearance came in, it comes back off Harris and just ends up in the arms of George Willis as Nathan Newell and George Willis protest to the lines when that Harris was offside. I couldn't quite see. No, it was one of those. It's, 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 he's made the run as the ball was played, so it's, it's about the moment where the ball was played if he was ahead of the defence or not and he's taken it down very well and tried to lay it off for a teammate but fortunately George Willis was able to make that claim and there was no problem at the back for Alfreton in the end Dwayne Wiley stepping up to get that one clear towards Billy Fuster oh it's unlucky it just a, a bit good knock. a bit too much Billy Fuster had to try and use his head to control it and it's just kind of flicked out far of throwing but it's right in that spinning mower corner it was nearly a Perlo-esque pass first time from Dwayne Wiley over the top. Very nice ball first time. He did get his head to it, Billy Fuster, but just about too much on it for him to take it down and do something with it. I think we're going to see a lot of this now because we know how competitive this game is going to be for both teams from each perspective. But Spennymore looking to come away on the counter-attack. It's Ramshaw on the right-hand side. He's eyeing up a cross. In it comes, it's towards the man in the middle, but he is offside. He puts it in the back of the net, but the linesman's flag was up very early. He knew it's a good line from the Alfred and defence uh, to play the man offside. Yeah, but also it's an insight because it's a great finish as well, and you can it's see that finish. if he's given space and time in the area, Harris, he will turn and shoot and he, he knows how to find the corner. I know there was no pressure on him because there was quite a lot of confidence that he had drifted offside. I was confident he drifted offside so there was never that sinking feeling for me that he was uh, going to gonna score. Obviously he did put it in the back of the net but it's not going to count. Jake Day flicks the ball on now towards Billy Fuster who does what he can. The ball nearly falls for Waldock but it's cleared long by Spenny Moor and knocked up into the air by Wiley. Spending with a lot looking behind. That's a great sweeper keeper instinct from George Willis coming 10 15 yards out of his yeah, box to get that one relief of pressure. Times they've tried to release McKeown down either channel. Um, we've seen him on the left hand side, we've seen Ramshaw on the right trying to get the crosses into the box. So it's interesting to see that's looking like what the game plan is going to be is if they can get the ball and they can counter quickly. We could be seeing another one here. Ken Diggy, though, with a great challenge. Yeah, that's a really good piece of defending because he's he, he's falling over, he's been held, and he's trying to step up, and he throws his leg, and he times it really well. And Waldock definitely buys that free kick. Yeah. He's uh, felt the hands on his back, and he's gone down in the corner. But it's one of them ones where you don't need to put your hands on the back. You can... Uh, 
I think it's Ramshaw who's uh, gone in. He's just put two hands on Waldock's back as he's in his own corner and he's going to instantly go to go ground. Yes, yeah, it's, it's one of those where it's always going to end up being a foul. It's not as much of a foul as it, you know some others would be in, in other areas of the pitch, but when you're the player of the defending team backing up into that zone, it's always going to be a free kick. Wow. Gloucester are winning against Curzon Astor. Well, we said they'd, they'd need, if we won today, they'd need to make up 17 goals. Well, now they need to make up 19. Oh, yeah, of course. Because we've scored more goals if we ended on the same goals. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a fair point. Yeah, if, if they lose, it doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter. They can't catch us. Um, that will drop them down to... But as it stands, because the, the game's not finished, they'd have to score 19 goals over the next few games. Um, to catch it's looking like I'm sure Cousin aren't thinking about catching us I think they're more concerned about just making sure they get in there yeah well they will drop out of it uh, with the current standings they'll drop down to ninth place in the league so it's another team that are kind of threatening a little bit drifting a little bit further away as things stand oh that's Jake great Davis work great from header. Jake yeah Spenny more do deal with it though. Adam Lund trying to get that under control and play it to Jordan Thewlis, cleared away. Uh, what we've Spenny seen Moore. today, which I've not seen from George Willis all season, is obviously Spenny Moore are looking to exploit space in behind. Yes. But George Willis is stepping up quick. It's clearly something Billy has been conscious of mm. and spoke to George about coming off his line and killing those balls in behind early. Oh, Jake Day bleeding Ooh. from his head after that aerial challenge. I think and Becker might be feeling it as well, but he's going to have to head off to the sideline here. It looked like it was just a clash of heads in that aerial challenge. No wrongdoing from either player, really. It's just he didn't look in any pain, though. He wouldn't no. have thought he'd hurt himself. He's just Kept kind. Playing. He just. And then obviously you can't play with blood. No. And Becker is uh, feeling his head, but he's not. Bleeding, so he will be able to. He carry might, on. if he's got blood on his top, he might, might have, have to, to put on a different shirt. Jerry McDonough is being sent to warm up as a precaution, but I'm sure if Jake Day is able to continue, he will. But for now, Alfred and playing with ten men, Jordan Thewlis is going to be sort of occupying that central zone in Day's absence. Yeah, and I think that is. I mean, if there's if there's a photo of Jake there, I mean that's going to be a. Uh, a oh, good way to summarise that this is a battle today. A Can huge game for both teams. And the willingness of the players is going to cause a few bumps and bruises. He is looking to... Uh, I think he's getting taped up at the moment. So he is going to look to continue and get back on the field as soon as he can. Nathan Newell trying to release George Cantrell down this left-hand side as Becker gets ahead of him. And will try and hook it down the line. Lundy's Adam got Lundy time, but he's going to head it, it back, back first time. And that's where, obviously, we're missing Jake Diff through yeah. the middle. Spenny were just having plenty of time. That is the easiest they'll have it all afternoon. Jake Diff is going to have to change his top, as I need yeah. it to see. His, um, so you can't play with blood on your top. Yeah. So he's going to change. The Bulls are going to run out for one alpha and throw right in the corner. It's a bit of an awkward spot. Jake Day does have a new... Strip ready, and he has got a headband around his head. I think he's been oh, way headband off. Jake Day. We'll talk about this for years <laughs> to come. If he gets a couple of day, headband Jake Day, he's got no number on the back of no his number, shirt. no name on the back, but he Just is playing top on the field. So back to 11 v 11, Jake Day. Of course, he's continuing. You know, Pam will be kicking off now. <laughs> That's going to need some vanish. Throw comes forward from Clacky. Jake it's Day nearly getting straight back into the thick of it. George Cantrell trying to hook that one up the line. Day will give chase to him, Becker. He knocks it back to his centre back partner and he gets it clear. Adam Lund getting underneath that header only just. Clearing that one away. Not too much to do with Jake Day now. Tamworth are two up out. against South Shields. That is brilliant for us. Charlie are beating Banbury. Butter are beating Ipswich. <laughs> Get in! 
uh, biggest cheer of the day. In, in the continuing tale that nobody wants to win the championship. Yeah. The three teams that are in the mix just refuse to win games. Come on, we'll have Leeds next week as well. <laughs> Come on, Emmanuel Latte laugh. <laughs> We're getting the playoffs. We aren't. We're nowhere near. No chance. Cheers, Ipswich, for getting beat by Norwich. <laughs> Who's on the roof? We have a steward on the roof. <laughs> he's, he's got... He's collected two footballs already. Is he lost? I'm hoping that he's not. Me after a night out. It's a long way back down <laughs> if he is. Tell you what, he's I've never out. seen anyone get off on the roof before. No. He's going, there's loads of balls up here. <laughs> Kendi slices his clearance slightly while he's having to rescue it. He's been laid off. Well done, Adam Lund. I'm sure, but Adam Lund steps up to make the interception. Waldock trying to release the just on the counter, but it's intercepted. Uh, by Greenfield on the right-hand side. The tail of the steward on the roof continues because he just stood there now thinking, oh, how am I going to get down from here? He's sure enough now, isn't he? <laughs> He's, He's got, got a good view. He's throwing he? them down at Billy. He's been trying to <laughs> get his attention. Yeah, the, uh... Has he got a ticket? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Borough. <laughs> Josh Claxton lining up a throw just in front of the home dugout. Going to be looking to... God, it's all coming up thing. today, isn't it? It's all coming up today. Southfield's getting beat. Gloucester are winning. Borough are winning. Braintree not winning, though. I can't join in the fun just yet, unfortunately. <laughs> Clacky. Long throw into the area. I tell you, that's nearly as good as Lundy's. I think the wind might have picked it up slightly, but yeah. it was still an impressive throw. Jake Day looking to get past his man. He is held. Referee does not appease to any sort of claims for a penalty. Adam Lund trying to keep it alive, though. Cleared away eventually by the Spennymore back line. Oh, Great touch look at that. from the Spennymore oh, gaffer. He's not quite killed it, like. <laughs> <laughs> if that was me, yeah. Billy the boy down there. Yeah. <laughs> I think he'd have headed it back. <laughs> no, an excellent first touch from Spike there as it's come over to him from the clearance. A bit of, a bit of knowledge there as well, nickname. Nice, nice, nice. We're not Flicked on from there. Jake Deer. We're oh, getting confused with these nicknames again. Oh, Ooh, Lundy's just kind of against barreled yeah, into yeah. A, a player. It's it's not it's, it's not malicious, but it's um, no. I think he, he's gone in cleverly because he's gone in 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 a manner that's let him go down first to sort of maybe make it look like he was the one that's fouled. But the referee does see through that, and Spennymore are awarded a deep free kick. Brackley have equalised against Chester. That's oh. now one one which will put Brackley on 80 points, three ahead of Alfreton as things stand. Although we can't really ask for much more given the pursuit for fifth place and a home draw in the first playoff round. The three teams beneath are Southfield, Spennymore and Curzon. As all Billy Fuster charges forward through the middle. Jake Day to his right, but he has men on him. He's going to keep travelling out onto the wing. He puts it across Jake the box. Day. Jake Day's there. It's fallen. Oh. He's ended up on his knees. Oh, if, if Jake Day had stayed on his feet, he could have got to the second one and put it into a net. The goalkeeper dived. It just didn't quite fall. It's. I mean, it's Pollock with a, a good stop, really, at the back as the ball's come across the face of goal. Jake Day's got something on it. But he is thwarted, and it's 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 kind of just sat back up. If there was an Alfred and player waiting, but it's not happened for him, unfortunately. Tina's asked if Jake looks like Terry Butcher. It, it, his headband's black, so not quite Terry Butcher, but it's definitely the same sort of vibe. Same vibes, yeah. Yeah, he's he's giving it off. He's after giving it off. You've been fringes alive. <laughs> Get in. Been waiting for that one. <laughs> Don't make me take the hat off. <laughs> Do you know where you can get these hats, by the way? I think we might have mentioned where you can get them. The club shop. And how much for? £11. <laughs> <laughs> you do look into the stand over there, though. There's a lot more important hats. There yeah, are. Well, it's the market. I, I definitely think there has been a Matt Invano effect for the hats. More me, because I've been on more streams. Take my credit. They're, they're well, trendsetting, I think, is the term. Yeah, I've, sta I've started a fad. <laughs> Lundy heads it away. Wild Doc just felt to knock it down and. No nonsense from Clacky there. Clacky puts it off. Cantrell gets it on the ground eventually. Billy Fuster oh. looks to have been fouled. So does Liam Waldock. The referee yeah. does eventually give it. He's he tried to advantage. give advantage, but there's two fouls in there. Yeah. No, I don't think there's a booking in there. No, he's done, he's done the right thing there, the referees. Let the play run. 
uh, but it didn't come to anything, so Alpha will get a free kick. Scunthorpe lead two in a little blight. <laughs> Billy Fuster standing over this free kick. Looking like it's going to be sent towards the back post. We've got Diggy Wiley and Jake Day all in that sort of area. In it comes. Straight, straight into, into the, the goalkeeper's hands. James as he makes the claim. Oh, winning. Oh, no. God's sake. <laughs> Adam Lund taking no risks with that Alan clearance. Lundy. Jordan Theodore looking to make something happen, and he does win the throw. Mm. Good play. So I'm just taking Nine a look. Man. I'm just taking a look around the league. Hereford have beaten Warrington 1 0. Uh, Sheffield United are still drawing. City are leading at Luton. Just one goal. What a surprise. Uh, who else? Derby are 2 0 up against Leighton at Orient. Uh, Burton are 0 0. I don't know if they're on our thing today. I've not checked. Um, Mansfield are getting beat by MK Dons 1 0, which I believe does. Uh, does Wrexham and Stockport a huge favour? As the ball comes up towards Jake Day, it bounces through, but it's cleared away by Spenny Moore. Notts County oh, are 2 0 up against Warsaw. Diggy with a huge challenge in the midfield to break up that play. Spenny Moore do still have possession. Adam Lund is sent the wrong way by Greenfield on the right. Ramshaw looks over to well the Well in, Billy side, Fuster, excellent. Great tracking back from Billy Fuster. He releases Fans. Jordan Thewlis. Tries to get ahead of his man. Does he win the throw? No, he doesn't. Referee gives the throw in to Spennymore. Fuelis was not in agreement with that, I think it's safe to say. Shrimpton trying to switch it over to the left-hand side, but it runs all the way out for an Alfred throw. Yeah, that's not what you want to see when you're trailing, especially as we enter the final 15 of the first half. Just over the half-hour mark. Josh Claxton heading over to take this throw. With one of the uh, one of the balls that were found on the roof. Fuster makes his way back up into the advanced position. Throw in. In it comes. Into the box. It's a good throw headed away by Spennymore. Liam Waldock knocks it back into Jake Day in the area. Tries to lay it off. Jordan Thewlis gets the shot away. Strike can't quite Over keep it bar. down, but that whole phase of play was a good idea. Yeah, it's a rare instance from a throw-in not taken by Adam Lund that's gone into the box and caused a problem for the opposition. I think Clacky's definitely made a case for himself over the past few yes. weeks that he, he yes. can throw the ball just as far on his best. So he's been taking them from that right side where they're a bit deeper, where it's going to be dragging Lund out of position to take the throw-in. Mm. James takes the goal kick for Spennymore up towards... I'm sure he flicks it on, but it's headed back away by Alfreton. A miscue from Staunton, but he gets there on the second attempt. Liam yeah. Waldock sending that one into, into the area in the corner. Hacked away again by Spennymore, out for an Alfreton throw into the press box. Why well, won't one come up here? No, I just, I just want to... We've been waiting. I honestly, all this gear is going down if the ball comes in here, because I'm going to bring it down. <laughs> I might, I might send you over and knock you out of the way. Shoulder <laughs> badge in the air. Clacky taking this throw in again. He is putting his name in the hat for these throw-ins. It's a great throw. Up towards Jake Day, does win the header. Flicked on by Cantrell. Lundy Comes away. Lundy puts it back, it back in. Missed by the man at the back for Spenny Moore. Waldock lays it off for Jordan Thewlis. Tries to get it back to Liam Waldock. Can Liam Waldock's it? there. Oh, oh it's, it's an unbelievable save, save from Brad wow. James. Brad James has kept the score at 1-0 there. He puts it out for a corner. I mean, Liam Waldock, Jake Day was sort of just ahead of him, but he knew he was offside, so he let Waldock go for it. And somehow, he, I think he's done the right thing by not trying to go into the far corner. He's tried to put it to the opposite side. That hand but could be save. huge. Amazing, amazing I save. mean, it's almost a mirror of the first game where we were leading early on. Brad James made an absolutely unbelievable save to keep the scores level, so hopefully we don't get a repeat. Spenny Moore clear the car. Oh, oh my, I can't believe. Oh, Josh Claxton. An awkward one. I think the wind to just took him off course there. Deal with it and get it clear. But that looked like a scary one. Jordan Thielis chasing this ball down the channel, but it is going to run out for a goal kick. 
I mean, everything said that was going to be two all for and yeah. with that lovely two goal cushion. But the save, I think that might be. I mean, we've seen some great saves at the impact this season, but that might be the pick of the bunch. It's, it is a fantastic save. I mean, George Willis has had a fair few of his own, but yeah, you think that's, about that's going to take some beating. The save against um, Rushall. That was uh, that was an unbelievable save on the line from a Senny's header. He's had his moments, but that could be massive for spending with season. Nathan Newell trying to carry this ball forward down the left-hand side. He doesn't have anything ahead of him, so he checks back. Tries to go for a ball in on his right foot. It's not the worst. George Cantrell keeps it alive. Jordan Thewlis now with a ball in the area. Waits for the layoff, gives it to Josh Claxton. Well. Adam London support now. Tries to fire it into the box, but it's closed down by Ramshaw and out for an Alfredson throw. I think. Surprised they've not got a new ball out there. Curzon and Ashton have equalised against Gloucester, which puts them back up into sixth. Boo. South Shields and Spenny Moore Boo. obviously still losing. Brackley but he needs to come draw. sharp from the throw. He oh, turns. Oh, it's, an, it's a great first touch. Flick. Flicked on. Fewless strikes. Fewless is an amazing save. Chipped there. Is there at the back post. He's onside, and it's two 0 to Alfreton. It's probably the easiest goal he's ever going to get. Jordan Thewlis firing it in from the back post and it looked like another unbelievable stop from the goalkeeper, Brad James, but it's he's got a hand to it and it's trickling. It looks like it might just go wide at the post, but Jake Day on hand to tap it in on the line and it's 2-0. Yeah. He's got his goal. Spinning will have to be more lively in the area there. I mean, the save from Brad James again, unbelievable. That yeah. hand to stop that effort from Jordan Thewlis was excellent. But Jake Day just pounced on it. An absolute poacher's finish. Unbelievable. Just seeing that uh, Footmore have given Alfred's first goal to James Oliver, who is uh, on loan at Belper still Town. Out on loan, I believe, at Belper Town. So I'm um, not too sure what they've seen there, but that's by the by. It's 2 0 and uh, a richly deserved goal for Jake Day, uh, certainly after his performance on Tuesday night. It's a poacher's instinct, really. George oh, George Cantrell. Cantrell. Come on! <laughs> Alfred and Town have been fantastic so far this afternoon. Two goals to the good. Really solidifying their case for fifth in the league and potentially rising up to fourth or third. Fuck Chorley and Brackley. Ipswich have equalised. Oh, dear. Massimo Miss Luongo, an ex-Borough player, has equalised. So that's all right, then. anymore with possession in the middle of the pitch Brad James now getting it clear you'd be furious wouldn't you if you're the Spennymore goalkeeper this afternoon he's made save after save yeah well it was absolutely incredible stops obviously I was the only one in the uh, gantry out of us that went to Spennymore and it was Dwayne Wiley who got the first one and then Brad James made two unbelievable one from a free kick and one similar kind of like a ball fell, it struck, it looked like it was in. Mm. And he made two unbelievable fears. The difference is this time, Jake Day was on hand to finish it off. Yeah, and I mean... And the effort from Jordan Thewlis was just as good to yeah, get the ball under the man, charging him down and make the goalkeeper have to kind of... Usually as a goalkeeper, you want to get a strong wrist to push the ball as far away as possible. And all he could do was kind of stop it from going in and it, it, it yeah. had to stay in the area and that 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 is really easy goalkeeper you've been let down by your defenders not reacting to that before Jake Day obviously Jake Day just has to drive it in but Dwayne Wiley stooping low to sort of knock that one down for Ken Diggy to get clear Spennymore still in possession though Shrimpton laying it out wide for Ramshaw Staunton's ventured forward and Frost he's going to whip one in. in towards Greenfield at the back post to Izzo. It's going to be a goal kick for but Alfredson. Nathan Newell does well. Yeah, he's, he, he's got into a position where he, he knows that he can hold him off. He's not fouling him. There's no wrongdoing in it, but he's managed to win the goal kick, which is the desired outcome from that kind of position. George Willis going to be sending it back up the pitch. We have five minutes to go until... Uh, South Shields have drawn one back against Tamworth to ah. make it 2-1 against the champions. Scores remaining the same elsewhere, though. 
George Willis sending the goal kick up towards Jake Day. Headed away by Mbeka. A little flick from Harris, but not enough to get beyond Ken Diggy. Jake Day taking that one down. Laying up to George Cantrell, who tries to release Jordan Thewlis on the right-hand side. He's got He's Liam Waldock getting the area. into the area. just too far back, and I think Liam Waldock had peeled around to the back post because yeah. that's where the space was. I think Thewlis thought that he was going to try and occupy that kind of position on the edge of the box, which we've seen him score from a few times this season. But just a slight misjudgment, giving away the ball. Spennymore still in possession. Trying to release Ramshaw down the right-hand side. Offside, though. Free kick to Alfreton at the back. Well, just over five minutes to play. A plus stoppage. Oh, my God. Of the first half. Maidstone a 2 nil down against Truro. Truro on absolute play. Truro with a, an unbelievably difficult schedule. They've played, I think, Wednesday... Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, something like that. And, and if you want to know how difficult that is, my leg's still hurt from playing five aside on Wednesday. <laughs> but you did play two games. I did play two Very games. Very important to note there. Two games in one day as opposed to what? So I, I've basically played just under a full game. Yes, yeah, so you're basically a professional footballer. <laughs> That's how you can look at basically it. Basically Grant Ledbell. <laughs> if any footballer you could be, that's a, an interesting one. Jordan Thewlis trying to take that one down. Liam Waldock helping him out, and he is a free kick the on back. the edge of the area. It's Chance. really dangerous. Waldock will fancy this. Yeah, it's uh, Shrimpton giving that one away. He's put a bit too much of his weight on Liam Waldock, uh, who went down. It looks under the like challenge. Jordan Thewlis has gone and collected it, yeah, which actually, obviously Liam we Waldock is there. We've only scored directly from one free kick this season, and it was Liam Waldock at Bishop Startford, and it was a bit, a bit of a perler. JJ just <laughs> intimidating the goalkeeper, <laughs> just standing having, having in front of him so he can't really see what's going on. I think Liam Waldock is going to be the one to take this. He's the one who put the ball down. So you think he's going to try and get it up and over. It's a great position if he can manage that. It's going to be difficult for the goalkeeper should he get it on target. He's leaving that left-hand side open, trusting yeah, his I'm, ball. I'm really not a fan of that. I like to stand, when I, like, I, when I was a goalkeeper, I like to stand in the middle of the goal. I know you're trying to tempt them to go for the spectacular over-the-wall dipping, but yeah. if they do it, it's not ideal. You're not saving it, really. No. But here it comes, Liam Waldock. Gets it up and over, oh. but it's just wide. It's come off the wall. wall. So the wall have done their job. Didn't look like the keeper would have got It wasn't there, was a sturdy wall, though. As they kind of jumped, they came apart, and it looked yeah. to go in between them. It made it look like it had just gone straight through maybe between two of the heads, but... Billy Fuster to take this corner. It's going to be a chance, potentially for 3-0 before half-time, which would be an a dream. immense result to take into the break. I'm just reaching around so I can see Billy Fuster <laughs> taking the corner. Bear with us. Corner it's a great in. whip. Claims for handball. Oh, Jake it's Day another great save. But it's another fantastic stop by the Spennymore goalkeeper, who is keeping this, keeping his side in the game, keeping it from being four 0 Really, Liam Waldock getting back for some defensive work. Clacky laying it off for George Willis, who gets it clear. But another big chance. Yeah, George Cantrell just almost. kind of volleying the ball back into the area. There were shouts for a handball. I don't think there was anything to that, though. And then Jake Day just stuck his foot out to flick it towards goal. But the keeper, Brad James, got a leg onto it to stop it from going in the back of the net just before as we await the um, board to go up for stoppage time. Looking like it's going to be three minutes. Three, I think, yeah. I think that's what Clacky was talking to the Lino about, but I wasn't really listening. Adam Lund getting this one clear. Hereford go two up at Warrington. Scunthorpe take a 3-0 lead. Liam Waldock laying this one back to Dwayne Wiley. There was, thought there might be a chance for a sort of counter there with Jake Day laying it off, but it's gone back to George Willis. He takes oh, a touch. calm as you like. And sends it far, far away. It is going to be three minutes added in this first half. Fuster on the ball now on the right-hand side. Jordan Thewlis wants it in the area, but he cuts back. It's a great turn. Trusts his left foot into Jordan Thewlis. Tries to lay off a Liam Waldock. It's been kind of caught up in the ground. It bobbled. And Spennymore do manage to get it clear. Dwayne Wiley sending it back forward, though. Jake Day getting something on that. Staunton looks like he's going to get that one clear, and he does. 
but it is out for an Alfred and throw. I mean, if this does stay how it is and offer and win this game, I'm really going to look forward to the swagger. Billy walks into the room for his interview at the end of the <laughs> game. He'll be walking in like Conor McGregor, want a million dollar walk as he comes in. How about that one, boys? Uh, so I definitely saved him a piece of cake. Oh, yeah. Hopefully. We're not involved, by the way, if all the cake's gone. We're, 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 not, we're not in the position to... Uh, Touch them. Consume all of it, yeah. We're up here. Is going to be a throw in for Alfred in an advanced position. Adam Lund getting a new ball from the dugout. I don't know if they'll let him use it. They will. Just to get the best possible chance of firing it into the area. Dwayne Wiley staying back for this one. Not something we often see. The throw in does come in. Flicked on by Diggy. Jordan Thiel is trying to get a shot away. It's blocked in a crowd of bodies and eventually away. Uh, Something has to happen at half time for Spenny Moore because it's yeah. it, it's becoming uh, the the first goal went in from Billy Fuster early on and it looked like they've came to life and that second yeah. goal went in and none of them had reacted and now it's a, almost a case as this is a lost cause and it's never a lost cause in football. I mean, no. you think a couple of weeks ago when Newcastle were three 0 down and they came back and won four three. It, it can always happen, and it just looks as though the Spenny Moore are rolling over, and it's not even half time yet. Obviously, we don't mind that. No, we don't roll over, lads. We, roll we over. Mind, but mind in, 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 in the case of a good football match, and you know what, this should be a really competitive affair for two teams that are battling for, for playoffs and have massive, massive points to play for at the end of this season. It's not the performance you expected from Spenny Moore going into half time. No, and it's, it's, it's a surprising one given where they are in the table and given their turnaround in the second half of the season. But to go in at half-time like that is something that we'll be very happy with. Alfred and two goals to the good, courtesy of Jake Day getting the second, Billy Fuster with the opener. But it is 2-0, someone to ask the trick chat. It, it is 2-0. Uh, but what a great first half for Billy Heath's side. Uh, and we will join you. Hang on, off scores, break. scores. After so, the score update. He's trying to kick me off, scores. <laughs> Chesterfield are drawing nil-nil with Wellstone. Notts County a 2-0 up against Warsaw. Mansfield are drawing 1-1 with MK Dons as we go into the League 1. Derby are 2-0 up against Leighton Orient as I... Sheffield United are drawing with Brentford 0-0 and then we'll get to the National League North. Hereford 2-0 up at Warrington. Tamworth leads South Shields 2-1. Southport have just taken the lead against Rush Hall Olympic 1-0 there. Scunthorpe 3 up against Blythe. Spartans, Kingsland and Peterborough Sports are level at 0-0. Darlington and Farsley Celtic are also level at 0-0. Curzon have equalised against Gloucester so that's 1-1 there now. As Charlie lead Banbury 1-0. Buxton and Bishop Stortford are level going into the break. Brackley have equalised against Chester, so that's 1-1 one, one there. And finally, Boston and Scarborough are deadlocked at 0-0 as well. So we'll take a half-time break, but we hope you'll join us for the second half of this massive playoff battle. But until then, we'll see you later.
Hello everybody and welcome back for the second half of the live watch long as Alfred and Town face Spennymoor in the National League North. Alfred and Town currently holding a 2-0 lead uh, with a great first half performance. It could have been more, uh, but goalkeeper Brad James for Spennymoor has been excellent and kept it from being a, a bigger scoreline. He's made two unbelievable saves that yeah. like, haven't ended up... One, he's made three, but one of them ended up in the back of the net thanks right, to yeah. Jake Day. But... Two of the saves he makes have stopped it from being three or four nil. Um, so Spinnymore have got a mountain to climb. They the wind against do. them. Wind against them. <laughs> Uphill. It's it, it's a big ask. Um, not an impossible one, but one that I think well, are going to look to make extremely difficult for them. They're shooting towards the jockeys behind the goal. But yeah, you've got you've got to respect the, uh, the the standard final away day of the season policy. Fancy dress. Got a, a lot of jockeys behind the uh, behind the goal at the moment. Who's here? I don't know. You'll know. You've got more chance of knowing than me. I, don't, well, I, I actually didn't hear. What time is the national? I have no idea. I've not had a bet this year. I had a bet last year. I um, funny story about the Grand National. Just while we wait for Billy Fuster to take kick off, I had a. Go on. Um, last year I uh, rang Megan and I said do you want to bet on the national I said I'll put it on for you uh, I'll read you the horses names and so she picked one it was rubbish uh, like never had a chance of winning mine won uh, Coco Beach nice um, I, I won the national last year won a couple of quid uh, Megan's had fallen on the first jump good so I uh, rang her up because she wasn't in I'd watched it she was out I rang her up and I said you'll never guess what you can never guess who's won the Grand National she started going mental she was going if I won if I won I said no yours fell I won <laughs> <laughs> I bet she was happy with that <laughs> didn't fancy it again this year then no I didn't know it was today and obviously I was up here so I'm not uh, priorities uh, I'm not too that. fussed I didn't find out until I got uh, well my dad rang me at about uh, half past 11 and said are you having a bit on the National and I thought oh no not done time yeah Oh well. But we are back underway in the second half. As Jake, Jake Day rolls uh and Becker. Well can't nearly, quite keep control. Out of his feet. So anyway, I don't think there's been any half time changes. Obviously there would have been some stern words at half time, I'm sure, in the away dressing room as Spennymore need uh, to change something yeah. up to get back into the game. The thing is what we saw last time is Alfred and went into the break 1-0 up in the reverse fixture and we come out into the second half just to kill the game and hold on and I, I'm not a big advocate for doing that you know at 1-0 because it almost will never work <laughs> because you're just inviting pressure it's, and that was the difference I'm hoping we don't play like that today it looks like we are play, still playing pretty high up and uh, we might not commit as many men forward but we aren't solely playing for the uh, for a clean sheet and but although we've what was it 12 games on beating at home before today we've not conceded for four games yes. on the bounce and that is why but if, if uh, he keeps naming the same team because this is the you fifth game in a row them. and at, if it stays as it it'll be five games in a row without conceding a goal oh, and, and it's a great Day, flick great on flick. from Jake Day Liam Wooldock he's got Billy Fuster to his right does lay it off Oh, just a bit under area, hit. It's cleared away. Josh Staunton does get that one clear. So that's Reece Staunton. I can't breathe. It's a good start. George Willis does run this one back into his area and he'll wait. The Pele. The Pele of time wasting. As the, uh, what was it? The Who called him? The... What was the, the Bulls website? blog. The Bulls blog. It, 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 Bulls it's blog. it's in Alfred and Law now. The Bulls blog. It's <laughs> it's brought up frequently on this channel. No, it's a he's a, using his time wasting abilities to the best. But yeah, as you say, I think it's so, at one nil certainly. But even at two nil, it's a dangerous scoreline to come out for the second half and have the attitude to just try and protect it. Um, but I think Alfred and know that if they want to. There's, there's, there's more goals in this game for them. So I think it'd be, it'd be foolish to just set up, shut up shop, try and see it out at 2-0. Because there is the cushion, but it's still, as you say, one goal can swing it. Um, but it does look like Alfred and have not changed their approach and are still playing high, looking to add goals to the tally. Just applying pressure, making it difficult for Spenny Miller to get out of their defence. I mean, we, we usually send it long out from the back, but Spenny... 
Spenny Moore have had no choice but to play at long out from the back because of the pressure, the areas we force them into. I mean, it's been a it's been a quite the display so far. George Willis sending this one long towards Jake Day gets something on that. Billy Fuse are trying oh. to get onto it. Is he fouled? Yeah, he is. I think so. I don't Three think Staunton. he had much chance of getting away and getting on the end of his touch. No. But the important thing is he's touched it round the corner and Staunton has taken him out. Billy Fuse to holding his back in discomfort. I think it is genuinely just one of them awkward ones where he he's needs awkwardly, a couple of minutes. I'm sure he'll take this free kick. He took one in a similar position against Chester. Uh, that landed right on the head of Kennedy Diggy, who yeah. got two that day and was very pleased to find himself in the player of the match for. I think, well, uh, yeah, as you say, Billy Fuse, he's gotten ahead of his man and it's just the sort of touch where he knows it, he's It's the routine, get it. just get just get that touch impeded. and try and draw a foul. Yeah. It's, uh, and it's worked for him and he is going to take the free kick, he's on his feet. Jake Day at the back post. Ball comes in, headed away by Spenny Moore. Just a bit too flat. But Nathan Newell taking no chances, sends it back to George Willis. Wiley is staying up on the left-hand side. Willis sends it long. It's, isn't a half a knock that. He's really pummeled it. It's Dwayne Wiley trying to put it back forward. Spenny Moore, though, do get it under control eventually. Staunton gets it down the line. Diggy gets ahead of his man and lets it run all the way through to George Willis. again, waits until he needs to pick it up and Alfred and can regroup Jordan Thulis, he's done it again by the way the uh, undershirt's come off the turtleneck is no more oh. for the second half he has to start in it, it must be a superstitious thing maybe maybe Spenny Moore with the ball at the back trying to make something work Billy Fuster just to have fouled Reese Staunton will be a free kick in a deep position. He sends it forward quite quickly towards Greenfield on the other side. Nathan Newell gets his body in there and wins the throw. Yeah, just used his arm. There's a couple of fans on the far side upset, but really, if you want a foul for that, I mean, you're going to have to give it every single time. The game will get very boring very quickly. Yeah, you won't play a lot of football if you're giving fouls for things like that. Adam Blunt sends it back down the line, looking for Jake Day. It gets past him, but it also gets past Mbeko, who's going to have to go either back to his keeper or play out. He turns his man, goes inside. Jake, Jake Day has put Mbeko 10 foot in the him. air, and <laughs> he's helped him back up, though. It's all in the spirit of the game. Yeah. Free kick to Spenny Moore, though. Brackley have taken the lead from behind at Chester to go two up, up as Charlie go three up at against Banbury and South Partly 2-0 against Rushall Rushall on their longest winning run of the season which I think is actually only three um, which shows how much they've struggled this season in their first time in the first, I think it was the first time we've played them this season yeah I think it's, it's it's still a great effort from them though especially given having um, South End Nick in their striker um, they've, they've done exceptionally well to stay up after their promotion yeah, and and you fancied them to come bottom, did he? No, you you fancied them to come bottom. I oh, <laughs> don't remember that. I don't remember that. No, they um they've they've done well to. I mean they're safe now, really, aren't they? Oh, Nathan Newell trying to win a goal kick off of the attacker twice, and it's a spinning ball in the area. Dwayne Wiley having to eventually deal with it. That was a a worrying looking one we might see some early changes here in the second half for Spenny Moore yeah two players getting kitted up on the far side I believe it is Glenn Taylor I yeah Glenn Taylor we, we, we were surprised he wasn't starting yeah. when the team sheet came out Glenn Taylor and then alongside him could be Isaac Fletcher I want to say yeah Isaac Fletcher and Glenn Taylor lining up to come on imminently Kingsland Town have got a red card against Peterborough Sports. Not that it really matters. I think that both of those teams are playing for nothing now. Kingsland, who yeah. put together an impressive run at the end of the season and uh, kept themselves cushed in in the league, uh, which you'd expect for a full-time team. You would, yeah. And here we are, first changes of the afternoon. Will Glenn Harris. Taylor introduced for Will Harris. 
yeah, as you say, it was a bit of a shock to not see him starting today, but he now does come on. And then uh, Danny Greenfield is coming off for number 36, Isaac Fletcher. So two changes, a double swap for Spennymore as they look to get back into the game. As you say, something had to change. I reckon they've uh, been, given, been given five or ten minutes at the start of the second half. To do um, something. To do something. And changes have now been made. Alpha is still the same. It's, n it's not never a good thing to say that. I, I've had managers say you've got <laughs> ten minutes to do something. Yeah. And then you go, oh, bit of pressure. You're not going to pass the ball. No. Billy Fuster trying to take it down the right-hand side. Looks back to Liam Waldock. Eventually goes back to Clackey. Tries to find Jake Day. He might be on side here. He takes it down and he shoots. Oh, just wide me. of the post. It was a good move to get back on side from Jake Day. And he got the shot away. It was powerful and very, very close, but just wide of the far post. I don't think the keeper would have got there. Moving like a prime, prime canoe. <laughs> canoe. He's just sent it wide of the post. Another chance for Alfred to potentially add to their current advantage, but showing that we're not sitting back, uh, sitting back and settling for the 2-0 current scoreline. Yeah, the, the ball from Clacky was excellent. Just into that pocket that Jake Day was occupying, the chest down, the confidence to strike it with your next touch across goal. Yeah, he'd, he'd, he'd made the initial run when uh, Billy Fuster had the ball, but he saw it get laid back. He got back on side and still managed to shift his momentum in time to get onto the end of the ball and ahead of the defender. Warrington have pulled one back against Hereford and the man who got sent off for Kings Lynn was Jonathan Margetts. Margetts. Oh, who scores all the goals. Um, the great escape. Dalor beating Farsley Celtic 1-0. Farsley Celtic in... Farsley could be down with that. Yeah. So, uh, the great escape. The great escape. I think the great escape is complete now, don't you, yeah. boys? Well eyed up. For, I think uh, I've you. manifested it into existence to the disappointment <laughs> of like four other teams. Yeah. Or did I always he, believed. Yeah, can, can I always be believed in the great, greatest gear. Steve Watson, I always believed. Alfred and Town do have a corner kick on the far side. Billy Fuster lining up to take it. Spending more seemed to have thought it was a goal kick, but the referee disagreed. Fuster will send it in. It's floated towards the back post, just ahead of Adam Lund, who tries to rescue it. It's taken a touch. He's got... A one chance to throw. throw it long. He's won a throw in, which is not too dissimilar for a, to a corner for, from an Alfredson perspective. Adam Lund lining it up. Usual suspects in the box. Lucky the only one back. In comes the throw. It's not completely away from the goalkeeper, and it's Nathan Newell to put it back into the box to make it awkward. Dwayne Wiley tries to get it under control. Now Diggy, it's eventually claimed by Spennymore, but Lund gets it back into the box. Fuser tries to get something on that, but I think he was offside. There'll be a free kick to Spennymore. So will be a free kick for Spennymore in their own box. Brad James is going to send it long towards Glenn Taylor. Who does win the header? Nobody. Dwayne Wiley stays side, down. Though. It's a head injury. It's gonna. Yeah. I think he was just bending down. Just got caught as he went. Dwayne Wiley still down. Yeah, the guys come straight on. Harry Perrett sent out to warm up. He will be the preferred option at centre back. I think should there need to be a change. Yeah, I think with a head injury, he's finally had a chance to show his pace. He's, he actually did say um, at one point, uh, I, I don't think you were there, but Quinton was there, he said at one point this season, he's just going to absolutely belt it onto the pitch so, as fast as he can. Um, so we can go, oh, there's, there we go, the fastest go, physio the in the National League North. But that was pretty quick, the pair, the pair of them on, very quick. They've got to run pretty much the length of the field nearly to get mm. to doing well with a head injury. We do hope he will be able to continue. Obviously, captain today is sat up, not quite back to his feet. Just I think yet, he really—he was just kind of taking a knock to the head. Yeah, you want to—you want—you want to be 
better to be safe than sorry in these sorts of situations. I think at the same time, I think it's also going to be in the fine. If you've taken a knock to the head and you're feeling it, you're definitely going to go down at 2-0 down. Yeah. I mean, I've done it. I remember I was a goalkeeper and I'd come out to dive at someone's feet and I took a knock to the head and I just went down and stayed there because we were winning 1-0 and it was like a cup final. And so it's definitely something players are conscious of. Even, even I was at like 14 years old, so... Dan Ali is fine. He's he going to go off. to his feet. Yeah, he's going to have to wait on the side for a bit, I think. Harry Perrett's still warming up. He's going to go back to the bench by the looks of it. And Lundy's going to do what he can to get rid of it. I'm sure he'll get called straight back on Dwayne Wiley. Yeah. Because it as was soon a as he can get waved back on. Yeah, and he's waved straight back on. Here he is back in the field of play. Jake Day battling. He's going to strike it, oh. but James gets down fairly easily. I can finally join the party a bit late. We've taken the lead. Shaq call first. The Shaq attack is back. Penalty. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. We'll see each other in the National League next season. And I will be in the away end, I think. I'll have to sack the commentary for that one. Spenny Moore trying to... I wouldn't say play out from the back, but they're trying to keep the ball at their feet as opposed to just going long straight away because it's obviously not worked for them this afternoon. Alpha runs so dominant in the air, especially in the sort of defensive third. And Becker with some tricky feet to bring this one up from the back. I am Maximus wins the Grand National. Anyone, nope. anyone have that? Nope. Favorite. South Shields draw a level against Champions Tamworth. Glenn no, Taylor. not ooh, boo, boo. <laughs> and Becker on the ball once again. Tries to play it over the top towards Ramshaw, but Lund gets that one away. Liam Ward, a great touch. Goes all the way back to his goalkeeper. Buxton have taken the lead against Bishop Startford. Up towards Jake Day. Billy Fuster now on the ball. Tries to find Jake Day in behind. Staunton. Jake Day Four. uses his strength and wins a corner. I, I'm great Jake Day Jake is Day. bullying the Spenny Moore defence I mean he's Fantastic held a man off play. to get the ball to Billy Fuse to the complaint of the referee I mean he's clearly just used his physicality and then the shoulder to shoulder challenge with starting was was not even fair sent the guy five yards away as he went to go put the ball across and his efforts are certainly not going unnoticed by the Alfred fans behind the goal as they chant his name Billy Fuster will take the corner on this right-hand side. Adam Lund and Dwayne Riley ready to run into the area. The ball comes in. Falls for Adam Lund. Now Dwayne Wiley. Tries to spin his man. And he's, he's done it, you know. He's got the cross into the box. Ken Diggy with the acrobatics. Ooh. Doesn't quite get there. Billy, Billy Fuster. Fuster follow up. Finds the shot, finds a way to get it through. But Claimed. Cam from the keeper just keeps hold of it. I think he's been the best player for Spenny Moore this afternoon, without a doubt. Well, the, uh, James. the Spenny Moore boys in the best equestrian gear <laughs> will be disappointed with this second half performance. You want to see your team come out and Ooh. make an effort. That was oh, that was nearly it. A bit this way, son. I was coming. I was about to charge through <laughs> you for that. <laughs> Brad James has uh, nearly sent the ball into the gantry. I'm been gutted. Cursed by me, I think. As soon as I've been singing his praises, he sent that uh, loose ball straight out of the ground, nearly up into the gantry. And in which case, maybe he was just uh, trying to give us some content. I'm sure he watches. It's going to be a throw in for Alfreton in an advanced position. Dwayne Wiley heading into the box. Curzon take the lead against Gloucester. Ken Diggy is staying back, so slightly more cautious approach from Alfred. And the throw comes in. Towards Jake Day, it's headed up in the air by Spenny Moore. Good challenge from Waldorf. Dwayne Wiley on the edge of the box, fancies it on his left foot, gets the shot away, blocked by the Spenny Moore defence. Jake Day gets something yeah, on Yeah, it's foul on the keeper. He's he tried his best to not foul the keeper, but yeah. his body's collided. When the keeper goes up and the striker goes up, if there's a collision of bodies in the air, it's always going to be a foul on the goalkeeper. Jake Day was conscious of that, tried not to make contact with the keeper, but... Unfortunately, there's kind of no way to do that without uh, not winning the ball. No. Oh, bloody hell. 
Oh, wait, Tamworth, score a goal. Please. And thank you. Give you a tenner. Darlow, the great escape, 2-0 up. Hand. From Spenny Moore. It's something that they've been looking for. As far as yeah, the league, uh, shall we have a look at the league? Live league Go table. For it, not for us, not for our sake. For the so far as you say, we're not looking for ourselves because, you know, that's never a good thing. <laughs> Farsley do drop into the relegation zone on goal difference. They have a ten worse goal difference than Blythe. We've just conceded, so that's great. I could join the party for about five minutes. Thanks a lot, Braintree. Thanks a lot. It's ruining my day. Ken Diggy trying to head this one away. Getting something well on Liam Bulldog helping out and winning the ball back. I think he's going to lay it off to Nathan Newell. It was a difficult one, and it is a foul from Nathan Newell on Corey McKeon. He'll enjoy that one. He'll get booked for that. I think it was a bit of a, a weak pass to him, and he had to kind of either commit to take out the man or yeah <laughs> what we'll cheering kick to spend anymore <laughs> that's got it on my bingo list for next season will we see Lingual without two points in his hands <laughs> we've actually said if we're if we we are comfortably in the playoffs on the last game of the season you're getting kicked off the commentary and we're going to get Leon I back that Get Leon I just, that. just <laughs> get him on the Lee Newell on the commentary. <laughs> just because we've got that, you know, northeastern repertoire. Yeah. Oh, oh wow. it's a chance. It's a big chance for Spennymore. Ramshaw trying to get a shot away on the turn, and it's evaded him. But the referee is, or the linesman's given a corner to Spennymore, which is a contested. Birmingham a three nil up, not because anyone on the stream cares, but because. We're having a conversation about them being ahead at half time, so I just thought I'd point that out. Matty Dolan is getting ready to take this corner for the visitors. Sunderland are winning, which I'd usually be upset about, but West Brom are in the playoffs, so I'll get in. Cross comes in, headed away by Adam Lund. Billy Fuster giving chase. Dolan does well to keep this one alive. It's out wide to Mikio. Gets the ball into the box. It's a dangerous one, oh. and Ramshaw heads it off the bar. And it's a let off for Alfreton. He can't believe that he's not put it in. It's right on the line. It's 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 a ball with pace. It's a difficult one to get underneath, but his header has struck the crossbar. It came back and was then headed over the bar once again by Spennymore. And the score remains 2-0. Um, and there's another change, a final change for Spennymore. Matty Dolan coming off uh, for, I think it's Callum Ross. Entering the field of play. So all three changes made for the away side. It is Cannon Moss. But that's uh, certainly a let off for Alfreton. George Willis lining up the goal kick off the back of that little scare. First big chance for Spenny Moore in the second half. Thankfully, not one that was converted. George Willis sends it long. Flicked on by Adam Lund. George Cantrell lays it to Billy Fuster, tries to hook it down the line, but he can't quite get underneath it. Out for a Spennymore throw. Wayne Wiley heading that throw away. Liam Waldock doing his best to keep it going. Nathan Newell, can he get there on the left-hand side? He can. Looking to get past McKeo. Stops the ball and leaves it for Jordan Thulis, but it's a good challenge from the Spennymore man. Glenn Taylor now. Tries to switch it over to It's Ramshaw. a waste. Just a Clacky waste of possession. That's so good. Spennymore now into the Alfred and area. Not much support for Isaac Fletcher, but he does lay it back for McKeon, who tries to play it inside, but Liam Wallet with a good challenge. Well then, Wally. It's Finley Shrimpton wasn't able to. Coming get the down cross to in. it now, 20 minutes on the clock, 20 minutes from safety in the playoffs, 20 minutes from 
going to Scarborough, just hoping that we can secure that home draw in the playoffs. Liam Muldock in possession now, lays it off to Billy Fuster. Travels forward. Oh, oh wow, Billy wonderful. Fuster. Through the legs. He's of his still man. coming. He keeps going. Tries to fire the shot oh. in from outside the area. It's claimed by the goalkeeper eventually. Great run from Billy Fuster. Ultimately came to nothing though. And we are going to have to transition back here. Round short for Spennymore. Gets inside of Dwayne Wiley and he is fouled outside the box. Won't be surprised if that's a booking for the captain and it will be. Dwayne Wiley is uh, going to be shown a yellow card here for that one. Dwayne Wiley has managed to get about 25 yards away from the referee before he's got his card out. The referee's going to have to go looking for him. He is booked. Ooh, Scunthorpe go far up against Blythe. Staunton lining up the set piece on the left-hand side of the box. Billy Hughes to the one-man wall. Lots of men forward for Spenny Moore here. Staunton puts it into the area. It's all to the way to the back post and it is Oh, in. it's wise. Oh it's wise, God, it's, it's wise. It's, it's fooled me and it's fooled half the Alfred and crowd as well. It's stabbed at the back post by the substitute, Callum Ross. And it's come off the side netting and then off the advertisement board right behind the goal. Well, it looks like Spenny Moore have come to play. <laughs> they have. That's for the last 20 I minutes. Mean, it's yet another lucky escape for Alfred and it is a very well delivered set piece uh, from Rhys Staunton thankfully for Alfred and sent wide at the back post and it stays 2-0 somehow George Willis set to take the goal kick forward it comes towards Jake Day headed by Spennymore George Cantrell today. Fulis in Fulis behind. In. Three. And it's three the flags up. Oh, it's a great finish from Jordan Fulis past the goalkeeper. But he has made his run just too early. Jake Day poking the ball through to him. But offside. And it's going to be... It remains 2-0. Thought we'd seen two goals at either end there, but neither. No. Brad James to send this one back up the pitch. Yeah. Oh, flash score. Got some news for you, mate. Jake That's Day awesome. chasing this one down in behind. And Becker going to have to go back to his keeper or clear it away. Oh. Jake Day nicks it off of him, but it's. And it's so uses silly. His body why, is he, well. why has he tried to tur turn him? He's the last man. He's got a striker right in his Don't back. Know. He's tried to turn out. He's nearly lost it. Jake Day just couldn't quite stay on his feet. And the goalkeeper managed to came and. Claim the ball before the danger of got too severe. Corey McKeown chasing this one down in behind. But he runs it out. Yeah, Shepherd out by Alfredson. Nathan Newell. Good play from the full back. Sure, every single thing Nathan Newell's enjoying today as a uh, native of Sunderland. Yeah, just we just said that. Harry Perrett is going to be introduced for Liam Wooldock. In the first Alfred and change. Very unlucky to not score. Yeah, Liam Waldock had that chance in the first half where he kind of rode through a couple of challenges, including one from Jake Day. Um, <laughs> as the ball looked to fall, when he got in, the finish was great, but the save was, was even better. Harry uh, Perrett. He's just going to provide a level of energy for these yeah. last 15 minutes or so. He's, uh, he, he runs, he's quick, he's fearless, and he'll... he'll play these last 15 minutes with a newfound intensity that no one else on the pitch will be able to give. No, I think he, he's absolutely brilliant at breaking up the play when he's coming off the bench, in midfield especially. Loves a challenge, Yeah, he, loves a tackle. He's a, he's a very fit young man and he can run. Um, and I think that's credit to Billy's game management as well. Mm -hmm. If He obviously has the effect that we think he'll have because saving... Pez obviously enjoyed using him as a fullback. He got that knee injuries, not quite there, but he will provide a different level of intensity to that midfield for the rest of this game. Adam Lund lining up a throw 
on the far side. In it comes towards Ken Diggy, headed out to Harry Perrett. But the referee gives a free kick. Ken Diggy using too much, uh, too much arm there, I think, on the on the defender, pushing him over. Free kick to Spenny Moore. Yeah, you can just see how tired some of those players are. Starting goes to play the ball back to his goalkeeper and it ends up 20 yards away from him on the wrong side. The keeper's had to run right across for it. And I think that's just tired legs, you know, and yeah. trying to get the ball back quickly to get this game back underway. Knocks over the top from Harry Perry. Very good ball. Fulis is going to have a chance to run, but Enveca heads it back to the goalkeeper. Didn't fancy taking on Jordan Thulis. Brackley go through on up. Curzon go through on. And Tamworth go three to up. Lovely. Come on. Glenn Taylor trying to do something for Spenny Moore. Nathan Newell almost keeps it out from being a corner, but it's bounced off the corner flag and it will be a corner for Spenny Moore chance for them to potentially do something and get back into the game. Staunton heading over to take it. The ball comes in from Spenny Moore towards the front post. George Cantrell clears. Fuster's going to have a chance to chase. He gets a touch well. and oh, oh how yeah. I can't believe that's not been given as an Alfred and throw. It looked much like it should be from where we're stood. Spenny Moore. Win another corner. Get another corner off of Glenn Taylor. I must say, Lewis Salmon is kitted up and ready to come on. They are turning it up a bit, Spenny Moore, now. Where well, you're going to, aren't you? Yeah. They have to. They have no choice. They go short from the corner. In it's it whipped in towards the back post. Ooh. Strike, it's there. Glenn Taylor with a fantastic finish at the back post. And it is 2-1. And there's a bit of handbags in the goal. I think George Cantrell not willing to let go of that ball. Referee with a, a very long whistle to uh, try and break things up. And Becker has now eventually got away with it. And gets the ball back to the centre circle. But it now does mean it's going to be a cagey final few minutes for Alfred in here. 15 on the clock. Glenn Taylor, the substitute, finding the back of the net, unmarked at the back post. Jake Day thought he could get underneath it, and it's just about gone above his head. Um, and he was never missing from there, Glenn Taylor. He's a great finisher. Southport, 3 0 up against Rochelle Olympic. It's not what we wanted. They did look threatening. They've had their chances, Spenny Moore, and they now eventually have their goal to get back into the game. Back underway now at 2 1. Yeah, the intensity is going to be right up there for 15 yeah. minutes. It's going to be an intense one. Lewis Salmon is going to be introduced in place of presumably Jordan Thewlis. Yeah, yep. off he goes. Just a bit more energy, some fresh legs on the left-hand side. Although we might see him and Billy Fuse to swap, swap wings. That comes from a throw in there that's definitely not throwing. Yeah, that's it's, it's unfortunate because... Billy Fuster to look to take the ball down the line. Spinning will play it, intercepts it and knocks it out for a throw-in. The linesman and the referee get it wrong. Yeah. And then ultimately it Ball results in a that. quick throw-in to a corner. And the corner resulting in a, uh, a quick shot corner resulting in a goal. We are seeing uh, Billy Fuster remain on the right-hand side and Salmon on the left in place of Jordan Thule. It's a straight swap. Well done, Harry Perris. Harry Perris closing down his man. You can see he's hobbling, hobbling a, bit a bit with his knee, though. Yeah. It's not really the sort of thing you want to risk, but he's going to give it all in this game if Alfred can get over the line here at 2 1. Billy Fuster wins the header. Hopefully it should say 2-1 on your screens now. Lewis Salmon trying to keep that one in. Oh, and he thinks he should have a corner. Again, I, I can't believe it's not a corner because if he's the one that's knocked it off, why would he do that? <laughs> why would he do that? Why would he not play it off the man for a corner? Uh, but it's a goal kick to Spenny Moore. Fan gives it back to the goalkeeper uh, quicker than you think. He was, uh, he was about five. Yeah, he was about five. We'll let him off. Um, Vaughn's giving grief to children <laughs> in the home end for giving the ball back. Mate, you've, it's, it's, you've got to install this game management. 
You need a seminar wrong. before you can buy a ticket about yeah. what to do. Billy Heath's at the gate going, right, if it comes to you, take as long as you need to. Free kick. Or, yeah, free kick for a high foot. Spenny Moorman is down on the ground. Buxton go two up against Bishop Startford. We're coming down to the final ten minutes of regular time, plus stoppages. Spenny Moore really turned it on in these last 20, 25 it's minutes. 2-1. We've taken the lead. Not an appropriate time to no. celebrate. But I'm getting it out of the way now just in case. Shack attack again. Can't stop him. Clip Spenny forward take from the Spenny. Free kick. Taylor challenges oh, Day. The ball falls. Oh. Fletcher goes into well, the looks to go across. Turns again. He looks to get down the line. The ball comes across. Away from Cantrell. Shrimpton on the edge. Flicks it back in. It's flicked on. It's all the way through. It's going to go out for kick. a goal kick. Referee's finally got that one right. Goal kick to Alfred and a little scare from the free kick. George Don't. Willis lining it up. Our it's, Pelle. It's going to be, it's going to be, oh yeah, here we go, look, takes it to the other side. It's going to be a big, big, big final few minutes effort required. None calm it lads. down, boys, calm it down. I'm sure every single one of the lads is going to want to fight for this win especially after that brilliant first half performance and what it means in the grand scheme of things. George Willis sends it long. Ken Diggy wants his players to win the header. George Cantrill does. Forward by Fletcher for Spenny Moore. Nathan Newell knocks it back to George Willis. It's a bit of an awkward one. He's going to have to get that one far away first time. On his left foot, he's done very well to keep that one on the pitch. Lewis Salmon goes down under the challenge from... You've just seen the Grand Michael National at the impact because he was mounted. <laughs> no foul though. Throw in for Alfred and Adam Lund. We'll send this far up the pitch, you get the impression. George Willis is there though in case he wants to go back, which he does not. Jake Day takes it down. It's in the corner, dispossessed though. Forward by Spennymore towards Glenn Taylor. Diggy heads away. Spennymore throw going to be end-to-end -end this. Spenny Moore are going to give it absolutely everything. Alfred and are going to have to give it absolutely more than everything if they want to resist. Throwing to Spenny Moore further up the pitch. Taken quickly. Ramshaw. Into the area. It's a lovely move. George Cantrill. Wins the free kick. I mean, the shot went wide anyway, so it doesn't matter. Uh, but Glenn Taylor laid it off to McKeon. Well, I'm feeling it. <laughs> I'm George Cantrell got, in, got <laughs> ahead of him I'm on the free kick. <laughs> I'm really feeling it these last couple of minutes. How long have we got to go? <laughs> ten to go, really. <laughs> Jesus, it feels like it's been ten minutes already. <laughs> I'm not asthmatic, but get me an inhaler. <laughs> George Willis finds the optimal position for this uh, free kick to be taken. About 10 yards seconds. further forward than where the foul was. No, 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 no. I think that's just about where it was. Optimal position. Yeah. <laughs> you take a free kick where your foul's on, it's an optimal position. Yeah. So, is that the, what you can get away with? Yeah, basically. Adam Lund. Left for Ken Diggy to get clear. Up to the goalkeeper, Brad James. We're currently seeing Jake Day and Harry Perrett as a front two. I think Perrett's going to drop back. Glenn Taylor wins the flick on. Dwayne Wilder getting it away. Oh, a bit more wind. A bit, a bit more, more wind. wind. That might have come to the gantry. It's not even going to go. Nearly didn't go out. Down the line towards Ramshaw. Clacky heads it away. Billy Fuster hooks it down the line. Does well to keep it in. Spenny Moore. Try and go down the line again. George Willis sends this one back where it came from. Jake Day trying to do his best to put some pressure on Pollock. Salmon sending it back forward. Ramshaw lays it off. Ross out to Fletcher. Back into Ross. It's a good move. Glenn Taylor could be in behind. It's a save. great save from George Willis. And it's out for a corner. Come on. Great good, save, George Willis. Big man at the back, George Willis. It's a fantastic save. It's a great move from Spennymore, cutting it through the Alfred and defence. And Glenn Taylor, you'd back him to score. But George Willis 
putting in a, a fantastic save to send it behind for a corner. Ten more minutes to hold on, or however many's left, I don't even know. Spenny will put the corner in. Clacky gets away it away. Clacky. Kept alive by Spennymore. McKeown is going to knock it back. Ledger into the area. Headed into the hands. The grateful gloves of George Willis. Oh, grateful who gloves. Who goes down. You've been rehearsing that to one. To waste a bit more time. No, it just rolls off the tongue, mate. <laughs> it did. It did. It rolled <laughs> off the ears. <laughs> George Willis taking his plenty of time. His sweet, precious time. Don't mind it so at all. We were, we were on cue there, weren't we? For, 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 uh, he's taking a while. <laughs> Jack Day wins the flick on. Lewis Salmon. Can he get this one under control? No. Away by Ledger. It was a difficult one to get down on his feet. Comes back to him, though, Lewis Salmon. Tries to spin his man. He's all over him. And the referee inexplicably does not give a free kick. Salmon well done, showing Lewis. the desire though, he blocks the clearance. I'm not too sure what Just the referee seems to Over not give five that. minutes left on our clock. That's a little bit behind though. So there's probably about five minutes. We'll just have to wait and see if it added time. Ryan Taylor, by the way, is stripped and ready to be introduced. Lana's even in it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Throw in to Alfred. Oh, Matt has had to take a break, heads <laughs> Been here too many times, I Too many times. Ryan Taylor is going to be in the final. Four one up minutes. against Gloucester now. Cheers, Gloucester. Thanks for doing us a favour, lads. Jake Day is coming off after a fantastic performance once again. Well done, Terry. Getting his goal. The Terry Butcher. He's coming fancy. Headband well. Jake Day will be spoke about for years <laughs> to come. Is that Jake Nay? Jake Nay. Headband Jake Day. Ryan Taylor is on. Can he use his experience to see out the final few minutes here for Alpha and get a vital... Farsley vital and Blythe have both pulled one back. Wow. The goal for Farsley is a bit more important because that's 2-1 yeah. rather than 4-1 than it is at Scunfort Blythe. But Adam Lund is being sent back even further to take this throw in. The Lino is moving back with him, which isn't helpful. No, but he sends it down the line towards Taylor. Bounces ahead of him. It's going to be run out all the way for a, a throw in. Michael Ledger will take it for Spennymore. Goes straight back down the line. Kept in by Spennymore. Glenn Taylor looks over for Fletcher on this left hand side. Now to get Staunton. over Clacky. Clacky's got to come over. It's, it's over here. The Massively over here. Glenn Taylor's kept it in play. Tries to put it back in himself. George Willis makes the claim and down oh. he goes. You can't blame him in that situation. Every second counts now. <laughs> I know what they feel like. <laughs> George Willis. The ball just bouncing before Willis uh, <laughs> as he went down then. They're always a nervous one. You never know what can happen with a bounce. Taylor, Taylor wins the header, but it's blocked. It. It's going to go out for more. a throw in. Searching for Glenn Taylor on the far side, but it's Jesus all the way out wept. for a throw. I think there's going to be a long wait for a ball from the Alfred and Doug out here. Do we have a spare ball? Oh, sorry, we've lost them. Yeah, no. <laughs> Where's that Stuart? Why do you go get all the balls <laughs> back far? He should have left them up there. Have a word. Someone have a word. Adam Lund sends it down the line towards Taylor. Away by Mbeka, who's holding his head. But it will be a throw in for Alfreton. Slightly further up the pitch, which is what we want. A bit of, bit of territory gained. Adam Lund will be taking Usually it. from this position, by the way, you'd have maybe Newell back. Yeah. Oh, Throws clacky. Throws quickly to Ryan Taylor in the corner. Sends it in towards Billy Fuster. Lays it back to Lund. Taylor once again. Lund again. Little one-twos between the pair of them. Taylor tries to win a throw. Cleared away by Spennymore, though. Glenn Taylor, great little... Chef well in, off, George. George Cantrell breaking up the He can play. pick that up. He can pick that up. Absolutely. I don't think he can. He's oh, not taking any risks. George Willis gets it clear. He's given the free kick to Spennymore in the middle. Callum Ross, a judge to have been fouled by Harry Perrett, I think, in a bit of a, a, bit of a tussle for the ball. Staunton will take the free kick. I tell you what. 
I'm, I'm more tired than I was on Wednesday after <laughs> five aside. And that was a, a very tired man. Oh, I wasn't, I wasn't that tired. Over to Taylor. Taylor. Diggy wins it though. Drive! Tries to play it That's over a to Lewis Salmon, but he's asking a bit much of him. Sent forward. Wiley gets it away. Back forward by Spenny Moore. Well, Eric in pairs. Underneath that. Taylor tries to fire yeah. that one out to the left hand side. Far too much on it. Take your time with it, lads. <laughs> Alfred and throw. Try to just shout into the fans below us to take the time with it. I couldn't see if anyone was going for it, but no. I'd rather they didn't. Clacky will send this throw down the line. He's well, got and Taylor to look about for. a minute left on our clock. The board should go up any second. I'm hoping it does. Yeah. It, no, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Oh God, I don't think it should be that much. Clacky sends it very far down the line. It's going to go all the way through for and Becker, who might leave it for a goal kick. He does. Less than a minute on our clock now. Brad James lining up the goal kick, wasting no time. Someone hold up the board, I need to know. Encouraging his back line to win the headers. Flicked on by the Spennymore man in midfield. Adam Land having none of it. Sent back forward by Spennymore. Clacky. No well problem. In. George Willis. Safe hands. Get the board up, lads. Come on. Five. I've just seen five on the board. Where have they got five minutes five from? Five minutes have added time. For Alfreton to see out this win, Spennymore are going to give it everything. It's probably fair. I'm just, you know, <laughs> football fan. Ryan Taylor holding it up. He's got Billy Fuster on the spin around him, but he lays it back for Clacky, who now looks for Fuster. It's a good ball into the box. Just too much on it, though. Brad James claims that one. Adam London essentially dropping in now to the back line to make it something of a back five. Well in. Dwayne Wiley wins that header. Lewis Salmon, the little overhead kick to get it away. And Becker for Spennymore sends it forward. Wiley away. Runs Go on, Tails. Through. And Becker tries to pick out the diagonal cross towards Glenn Taylor. Ken Diggy heads it away. Kept alive by Spennymore. It's ran short. Tries to send his man down. He's the asking line. a lot of him. Too much on it, and it's out for an alpha and throw in the corner. <sighs> Might need a defib up here for Matty if this goes on any longer. Adam Lund is strolling over to take the throw. Just again, get it as far forward as you can. Has anyone got a Rennie? <laughs> Adam Lund sends the throw as far as he possibly can. Headed by Spennymore. Knocked back for Staunton, who sends it long. George Cantrell leaps. Great leap. Adam Lund gets it away on his left foot. Spennymore still do have the ball at the back, though. Finley Shrimpson tries to get it into the box. It's away by Ken Diggy. Well in, Bill! Brilliantly. And he should win a free kick for that. He does. He's done brilliantly there. He's seen the opportunity to win that header and he's bursted for it and he's got there. Free kick to Alfreton. Take as long as they can. I think Willis could be taking it. Just get as far up the pitch as possible. The further away they are from our goal, the better. Three minutes left. There are there. Uh, Matt is not in shot, by the way. He's currently having to lean on the side oh. to not... Uh, yeah, you know, my legs are just tired. <laughs> George Willis lining up the free kick. Not long to go. Forward it comes, looking for Ryan Taylor, who does take it down in the box. Billy Fuster now tries to get a shot away. Still Billy Fuster. Back to George Cantrill. Now Harry Perrett turns back, pokes it out wide for Billy Fuster again. Can he beat his man? He goes back Excellent. to Nathan Yule. Smarter thing to do. Oh, he beats his man and he goes down under the challenge. No free kick, though. George Cantrell still has the ball. Trying to get closer to that corner. Free kick to Spennymore. George Cantrell not happy with it. Has a word with his man. The free kick will be taken by Spennymore goalkeeper Brad James. Two minutes on the clock. 
Philly Fuster, excellent work in that corner, by the way. Some of those little touches he just got there. You might have heard the ooze around with a little flick in behind shot, he got. Yeah. Free kick is sent forward. Does it go off? It does. Straight out of play. Not what you want to see. But no. Definitely not what you want to be seeing. Will be an Alfred and throw. Come Adam on, Borough. Fancy scoring a goal. In the dugout. Ready to take this one. Taylor and Salmon are the men that he aims for. It's towards Taylor. Gets something on that. Salmon trying to block the clearance from Rebecca, but it is away. Well done, Lundy. After it, Bill. Go on. Get across. Play is switched over to the left-hand side. It's Staunton now. A minute. He's waiting on the ball. He's not on got the, the option that he wants. He's back out wide. Darlington 3-1 against Farsley. Ken Diggy gets that no one away. No chances. I like it, Ken. I know, I know Willis shouted for it and he wanted it, but if the striker's is there, a poor. Ref time! Now. Ryan Taylor is the only man forward for Alpha and every other red shirt is in a back line. Adam Lund with a smashing challenge. George Willis is going to fall for him to pick up in his own box. <laughs> Despite the best efforts of Isaac Fletcher giving chase, it is George Willis There's now. There's 30 seconds on our clock. With the ball in his hands. Surely that's got to be it. Super George Willis. In goal. George Willis sends this one as far as he possibly can over the back line. There it goes. Ryan Taylor. It's a way headed by Mbeka, but Ryan Taylor still wants this. Brad James. Referee. Does get there, though. He sends it back forward. It looks like there might be another chance in it. Nathan Yule gets it away. And yeah. it's full time. Alfreton Town 2, Spenny Moore 1. It's a fantastic win in the final home game of the regular season and a massive win in the playoff race. Alfreton Town have come away with all three points. A monumental effort. George Willis waves goodbye to the travelling fans. Uh, and that, that save he made at 2 1 was the difference. What a win. What a save from George Willis. Wow. Jake Day embraces George Willis. He knows that that save he made is the difference at the end of the day. What a fantastic performance. The first half looked comfortable, but the second half, Spennymore looked more lively and eventually got their goal through Glenn Taylor to get them back in the game. And it was backs against the wall for 25 minutes for Alfred and Town. But what a fantastic effort defensively from the whole team from back to front. Alfred and Town win, Spennymore lose. And we go into the final day, whereabouts in the league, I think we stay fifth. We stay fifth, yeah. But how many points does that put us on now? 77. 77. That goes across the league. Darlington are beating Farsley Celtic 3-1. Peterborough Sports are beating Kingsland 1-0. Scunthorpe are falling up against Blythe. Southport 3-0 against Rochelle Olympic. Tamworth 3, South Shields 2. Boston 0, Scarborough 0. Brackley 3, Chester 1. Buxton 2, Startford 0. Charlie 3, Banbury 0. Curzon 4, Gloucester 1. Warrington 1, Hereford 2. Sheffield United are being beaten 2 0 by uh, Brentford as well. And Sheffield Wednesday drawing 1 1 with Stork as I just continue to look around the leagues. Uh, quickly, Derby 3 0 up against Leighton Orient. Burton win 2 1 against Stevenage. Mansfield come from behind to beat MK Dons 4 1. Notts County beat Warsaw. 3-1 and finally Chesterfield would be in 1-0 by Wellstone well that is it for today thank you very much for tuning in uh, and we will see you on the final day away at Scarborough thank you very much Goodbye. come on